Tonight, I'll be trying to bring a haunted hotel back to life. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Shit. The hotel's ex-military owner. I'm the owner, I'll say that's how we're gonna do it. Runs the hotel like a dictatorship. Oh, you're like a little fucking Hitler around here. Damn it, he's wrong. Can I save a marriage in crisis and rescue a hotel on the brink of disaster? We're gonna make it go or we're gonna shut it up. Sell the place, sell it, because this is madness. This is the historic Cambridge Hotel in upstate New York. It's set in stunning countryside, a few hours drive from Manhattan. The hotel has 16 bedrooms and a large restaurant and has had its doors open for almost 150 years. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. Ex-military man and local lawyer, John Imhoff, persuaded his family to help him buy the hotel in 2007. I remember sitting in my hot tub, smoking a cigar, drinking bourbon, and life was good and I wanted to take my wife someplace nice for dinner. So I said to her, why don't we buy the Cambridge Hotel and then we'd have a place to go. He must have hit me at a weak moment because I said, sure. Yeah. With zero hospitality experience between them. Which one is A27? I don't, I don't know the numbers. The hotel currently falls shockingly short of guest expectations. It's dingy nasty. and there's hair all in through here. All over these pillows. It'd be nice if we had a remote control. They're just gobs of hair. We've had remote control since when, the 70s? I'm not sleeping here, we're checking no out. No way, it's bad. When I bought the hotel, I didn't intend to be a hands-on owner, but I am always at the hotel doing something. One person has to be in charge. Got 84 emails. 17 from John. John is a control freak. How are we doing on that chicken? <laughs> it's working hard. We can do better, chef. It's ready to murder him. With this menu, there's a lot of restrictions to it. Our budget's really tight. The creativity's kind of gone out the window. Britt, um, all the rooms clean? Yeah. All the rooms coming in. I am currently the general manager. Excellent. I'll finish this oh. But John takes away my control. I have no control. But General John's hands-on approach isn't working. Nobody wants to stay, and the hotel is losing thousands of dollars every month. John wants to put every penny that we have into this hotel and that is something I am no longer willing to do. We are $750,000 in debt, but failure is not an option, and I don't intend to fail at the hotel. Unless I can fix things, and fast, John and Tina will lose their business and their home. If Gordon Ramsay can't fix us, who the hell else can? <laughs> wow, the real sense of grandeur. Definitely some history here. Cambridge Hotel, established 1885, home of Pyla Mode. I've been across America, I did not realize it came from here. Good morning. Good morning, welcome to the Cambridge Good to Hotel. See you. Uh, Gordon, and your first name, sorry? My name is Brittany, I'm Brittany. the manager. I have you in room mm -hmm. 117. Mm -hmm. That is $105 mm -hmm. during the weekday and $135 on the weekend. Okay. I think Gordon's first impression of the hotel is going to be what the fuck are these people doing? The Cambridge Hotel, RIP. Yes. Seriously? Yes. It's died, you mean? No. Rest in peace is the ghosts that uh, live here. We are haunted. Oh, come on. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Alice. Alice. Oh my good yeah. God. Yeah. She looks like something out of The Exorcist. She was four years old in 1913. When she died? But I believe in ghosts at the hotel. I absolutely believe in them. I'm gonna go yeah. up the stairs. They're creaky as well. And, oh God. Uh, are they the owners? No, I don't know who they are. Those have been are. here. This place is littered with freaky pictures. Yes. So, what's upstairs there? That is our third floor. Why is that roped off? Do because it is not accessible to our guests. Is that where the ghosts are? Well, that's where people say they are. If he goes up on the third floor, he is going to freak out. This is your room. Oh my God, bloody hell. Look at the wallpaper. What's the uh, post up there, what, what is that? Just there. So there's no handcuffs? 
<laughs> no, OK. So, so it's not a sex thing? <laughs> it is not a Which sex thing. It's a really thing. weird thing no. to have in the bed. I know. So you stand like... <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> well. Shit. <laughs> Welcome Thank to you. the Cambridge Hotel. Thank you. Christ almighty. I, I am not going to forget this day in a hurry. Horrible linen. Rough and nasty. Holes. Look at that. And the bed doesn't even fit the base. Honestly, I've seen better linen inside hospitals. Horrible. My bedroom is dated and uncomfortable. How could anyone think this was good enough for paying customers? Bye-bye. Can I meet the owners? Yes, I'll be right back with the owners. Look how dead they are. Gordon, <laughs> this is Tina and John Tina. Imhoff. I'm nice Tina. to see you. Nice to Gordon. see you. Nice to meet you, Sir John. Likewise, good to see you both. It's quite amazing when you drive up and you see this sort of statue of the building. It's... Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It's stunning until we get inside. <gasps> Hotel experience prior to this was what? Very, very little. I mean, none. I was. No, none. I... None. So, year one. What was the profit? We lost about $350,000 the first year. Year two? $250,000. Profit? Loss. Loss. So we're in for $600,000 within 24 months of business. Who's funding this? Well, um, my mom and dad have Us. put in several hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, our children. Our children. Your children. Yes. Yes. Shay has put about $25,000 on credit cards. Shay is your... The oldest daughter. Oldest. Your oldest daughter, right. It's a chef's um, significant other. OK. And so my youngest daughter uh, just lent us $10,000. Your youngest daughter? She's in college. Was your house on the line next? Yes, it is up for sale. And we would live here. We would move on to the third floor. Where'd you draw the line and say, stop, this is not working? You're standing there like proud cock, very confident, very happy, and like nothing's gone wrong, but... Taking money from your daughter that hasn't even started... I would one never foot ask her. ...on the path of her career? I believed that we would be able to turn it around. Oh, no, but, John, I'm sorry. Your parents' money, your family's money, your daughter's money... I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. He doesn't know me and, and he doesn't know the situation. I'm a military guy. I'm not going to take Chef Ramsay's bullshit. I've just met the owners of the struggling Cambridge Hotel and discovered they've borrowed money from their kids to stay open. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. Unbelievable. Tina, how do you manage? I don't know how I manage. And I was very close to running away several times. Wow. Seriously? Unreal. Thank you. I've been frustrated for years with him not listening to me. When somebody doesn't listen to you for a while, you just give up. What is it about John that's driven his wife and potential guests away? I need to watch the general in action. What are you doing with the Hoover? Welcome. <laughs> nice to see you. Sorry about the uh, owner walking through with the Hoover. Are you joining us for a sleepover or are you joining us for dinner? Dinner. Excellent. Damn it. Kim, you tell me I help you? John keeps himself constantly busy, but he's busy doing all the wrong things. His non-stop fussing and fidgeting is killing the hotel's atmosphere. What's he doing? Oh, my God. The tables in the bar might be clean, but I've got an eerie feeling the food's going to be filthy. Only one way to find out. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. My name's Philip. I'll be your server. Come on. Thank you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so am I. Um, what would you recommend? Well, the soup du jour today is a uh, vegetarian lentil. Vegetarian lentil? Yep. And what was the soup du jour yesterday? It was also the vegetarian lentil. Oh, so it's soup every two days? Uh, actually, it's longer than two days. Right. Um, I'll go for the pork and beans. Duck confit? Yeah. Um, pie a la mode. OK. OK, I think we're done. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. Chef, order's up. OK, thank you. Get him going, brother. Get him going. I think that Gordon is going to love the food. Chef Rich is great. We put out excellent food. Hey, Chef. Wow, look at that. This is the pork and beans. Holy mackerel. Hit. It's cold in the middle. Both of you, yeah? Just touch that meat there, please. Ice cold. Touch that. 
I mean, I can see why we've got RIP on the front of the fucking reception. Those are two medium rares, right, Scooter? Chuck them in the oven, please. Chef, ice cold in the middle. Tell them it's a sous vide product. We cook it to order. It disappoints me a little bit that we are boiling bags, putting stuff in the microwave. I wish we could actually cook with fresher food. Your duck confit. And Chef said the pork and beans was a sous vide product, and it's cooked to order. Sous vide? Oh, we cooked in a bag? Yes, they're frozen. Frozen? Yes. And this plate that's frozen? I, I think that's a sous vide product as well. Do we have anything that is homemade? Are the apple pies made here? The apple pies are made here. OK. Can you hurry with the desserts, please? Sure, thank, thank you. So far, everything has been terrible. Surely the hotel's signature dish is going to be better. How's the apple pie? Just tell them we don't want to complain anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is the home of apple pie a la mode. But if it's the home of apple pie a la mode, it should be really badass. Stay away from me. Wow. Paella mode, Gordon? So this is it. This is the That is the paella mode. Shit, this plate is absolutely roasting in the center. Has it been microwaved? It has. The apples are raw. If there's one thing I was expecting was a decent apple pie, and that is gross. I need to find out who's responsible for the terrible food here. Hello. If Chef Ramsay criticizes Chef's food, where is the, where is Chef? I think Rich will blow up because Rich does take things personally. Uh, I don't know where to start, to be honest. What the fuck is going on? Well, tell me what you, what you don't like. Can you be a little bit more constructive? Shall we start from the pork and beans? Stone fucking cold. It's a sous vide product. So you don't even cook that? No, it's sous vide. No. And can you cook? Yes. So why buy that in? Uh, price. Can you buy a store-bought, frozen piece of pork boiled in a bag and serve it to me stone cold in the centre. You're not even cooking, so you're just too lazy to do it. That's not true. I am not lazy. This menu could be run now without you being here. Yes, it's the way I designed it. It's the way you designed it. So you are lazy, then? I'm not lazy. If Gordon calls me lazy one more time, it could cause a problem. Might be going back to Britain in a body bag. I just tasted the food at the Cambridge Hotel, and it was awful. I think it's because the chef is lazy, but he's adamant he's not. That menu stinks of laziness. I'm not lazy. I'm here 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah. You can't call yourself an executive chef. Come on. Do you know it's store bought? I did. Why would you employ a chef that two-thirds of the menu is store bought? I, I think Gordon believes that I'm incompetent in running a hotel, but what I'm doing is right. Your hotel became famous for this apple pie, right? And this is the dish that is trying to stop your house being put up for sale to keep this place going. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say is there are so many basics wrong. I could fucking cry. I could seriously cry. I could cry too. And look at the apples. Look, the apples are raw, not even baked. And I could scream when I see that. I'm this dish was invented here. And there's thousands of restaurants across the globe that have copied what you originated. Have you any idea how lucky you are? And it resolves to that. Soggy, undercooked, soaking wet, piss pie. Can I have a quick word with you for two sure. seconds, please? I'm struggling to understand what's going on here. I need to hear a woman's perspective. John is smart in what he does as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's awful here. I can't get it in his head. But between the two of them, they're about to take your fucking house down. Him and John go back and forth. When I give suggestions, it's pretty much, you know, a and then it's pushed aside. And then John is making decisions. You're about to lose your house. I know. And he says, we are going until I haven't got another penny to put in it. He's never run a business before. No, no. And he's never done anything in his life but be a lawyer and a soldier. That is it. He may have won lots of battles, but he's fucking definitely losing this war, let me tell you. Finally, a stranger is seeing what I've been seeing. And I'm hoping that John is going to take something from this and either we're going to make it go or we're going to shut it up. I've seen about as much as I can stand at this hotel. The outdated rooms, the cheap linens, and the prepackaged food. How have things got this bad? I've got to get some answers. What's wrong with this place and who's to blame? The problem is here is that we have to ask 
to do something. We're not allowed to make a decision. We're not yeah. allowed to make a General decision. General manager, executive chef. Yeah. We have to run everything through everything. John. Make sure everything. What? We have we to have meetings. John's a lawyer. And so why do you have to ask someone that doesn't know how to run a fucking bath, let alone That's a hotel? What he wants. But he took over more control. That's when I put up my hands. Okay, you want to run it? You run it. It's fucking soulless. It's littered with shit antiques that are broken. It's got horrendous pictures all over the fucking place. Disgusting rooms. Food that comes out of a fucking bag. I, I don't control any of that stuff. I'm not making decisions. I told Rich that I thought we should cut our food costs. Have you got the respect from the owners to do your job properly, yes or no? No. Rick, I have absolutely... Could you talk? I definitely do not make the decisions that I think I should be able to, though. But she's telling you that, and that's what the problem is. It's not the fucking ghost, John, that's scaring the regulars away. It's you. A chef needs to be a fucking chef, and a general manager needs to general manage. I'm not a micromanager. When we first started this place and the, the ideas I had were all shot, shot down, that's the kind of stuff. Now it's coming out. You've handicapped the chef, the general manager is dysfunctional, and you're calling all the fucking shots. I'm not calling the shots. You're a lethal weapon. Well, you, you may think that. No, I don't think that. I fucking know that. No, just what? heard from your wife, your general manager, your chef. That I'm controlling. over control. I... You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. I finally got to the truth at the Cambridge Hotel. You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. The place is sinking because John the owner's meddling ways have made everyone's jobs impossible. I'm not a micromanager. They're not puppets. They're your team. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. Work it out, Your Honor. I'm going to bed. Good night. This is all stuff that I've been trying to get across to John for 20 years. That's better. Hmm. What's the matter? Seriously? Yeah. What's the matter? With you right now. You have a headache again or? <sighs> I've had it. I have had it. I was feeling squashed. And I don't have to feel that way anymore. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. Bedtime. And I'm not looking forward to sleeping in a haunted room. I've never seen such a delusional owner and staff that are so desperate to do their jobs. And now I've got to sleep in this. Christ almighty. Oh, fuck. What was that? This bed is so uncomfy. What is that noise on the stairs? Alice. Alice. <laughs> I had a sleepless night. And believe me, it wasn't a ghost that kept me awake. It was something far more frightening. Time to give John and Tina a wake-up call. After you, please. Hi, guys. Good. Hi. Sorry, sorry, These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Um, I've asked them uh, in my room this morning just to help you understand how difficult it has become for guests to actually stay here. Who would like to go first? I took a shower this morning and used a, what I thought was a clean towel, and there was hair in the towel. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bed yeah. itself was actually very uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 yeah, we left our room last night and couldn't lock our door, so we had to leave our hotel room door unlocked. Hand on hearts, how many of you would return here? No. no. The way no. 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 Anyone? Mm. Not unless you no. pay me to stay here. John and Tina, are you aware of so many problems inside these rooms? Some of them we are aware of, yes. Some of, some some of them. them, yeah. But what I'm more pissed off about than anything is that last night I went downstairs. In fact, let me show you. It's easier if I do it this way. I forgot my toothbrush. I went down to the car. And I cannot believe this. Just watch carefully. I went outside. So, stepped down the stairs. And all of a sudden, damn, I've locked myself out. I've got no keys to get back in. 
The bloody front door is not locked at night. No. Yeah, we even even night night night. Night. Now, there's no night porter. There's no security. And then, shock horror. I went behind the reception desk, and every one of your keys is hanging, replicated, in the pigeon box. Wow. That's terrible. Oh. <laughs> Duplicate key for every room. Oh, my God. Credit card details, personal cell numbers, it's all there. That's, scary. That's, That's really scary. scary. That's scary to think scary. about. Why is the door not locked? There's no good reason. So you got we have, we haven't out. locked it in a long time, though. No, about two years. In this community, you have eight major burglaries within the last 12 months. Three registered sex offenders locally in this community. I mean, how does that make you feel that we were sleeping in this hotel last night and each and every one of us was vulnerable? Yeah, yeah, right that's, that's not okay. So irresponsible. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, thank can, you I, can you stay here with me? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. John and Tina have broken the first law of hospitality. Keep your guests safe. John's so busy interfering with other people's jobs, he's lost sight of what really matters. I'm not joking around on the burglaries. Oh, I The sex I, offenders. I know, I know. Your reputation could be over in seconds on one incident in this hotel. Because you're not going to walk around this town as a prosecutor, a chief lawyer, and then be responsible for a serious rape taking place inside here. Wake up. You're running a business, not a courtroom. And they're here for an experience, not a fucking sentence. Sell the place, because you're not fit to run it. Sell it, because this is madness. Sell it, and keep your house. Worth it. I've just discovered that John has lost sight of the big picture at the hotel. The bloody front door is not locked at night, and his incompetence uh, is putting uh, the guest's safety in jeopardy. That's not okay. If John doesn't change his interfering ways, he and Tina will lose their home and be forced to live on the hotel's top floor. It's time to find out what it's like up there. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? It's like someone. Oh, shit. Who in the hell would put this here? This really is hotel hell. Oh my God, what happened to her hands? This place is genuinely disturbing, freaky. That top floor's no place to live, but I've got a plan. If I force John to see how different things could be here, maybe he'll get the message. So I'm gonna need Brittany's help. If we can prove to John and Tina, if you take charge and you hold those reins, that you can make money mm -hmm. for this hotel, trust me, they back off and you step up. Mm -hmm. OK? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hear. I'm hoping to prove to John that it can be busy, it can be fun here. Tonight, we are serving. We are doing a bar night. Oh, my god. This is terrible. We're not a rowdy kid doing shots, going crazy bar. It's a party, party, party. And we're going to do drink specials. We can get people in the rooms. A ladies' night tonight. I have to pack the place. Thanks. Bye. This is the first step to change. As last minute preparations take place in the bar and the kitchen, there's a new energy in the hotel. This is Chef Richie's chance to prove he can cook with fresh ingredients. Nothing out of a bag. Please, no preheated. All fresh, yeah? All fresh. Great. Rich. It's your responsibility to teach these guys how to cook. Absolutely. Not to reheat. Is that right, Scoot? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. He's just started culinary school. Oh, good man. And who inspired you to be a chef? I had relatives everywhere pushing me to join the culinary field because I wasn't physically able to do any other things, like sports and stuff. Yeah. What's the disability? I've had two heart surgeries and two back surgeries. How old are you? 19. 
Yeah, you move fast. That's a big asset. And you haven't been taught properly yet, have you? No. That's incredible. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I would like to have my own bakery and uh, be a professional executive pastry chef. Wow. We're ready to roll. Brittany has gotten the word out that she's in charge tonight, and people are flocking into the hotel. There you go. OK, let me ring them up. Ladies' night is going really well tonight. There's a mixed crowd of ages here, and everyone hanging out together and having fun. What can I do to help you? Nothing. Get out. 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 Right. Night's going great, but I don't think John quite understands how important nights like this are, because I don't think this guy gets the message. John. I want to show you something. Come with me. That thing spooks me every time I come in here. Here's the situation. Downstairs, currently, there's a buzz. And that got put together by your general manager, Brittany. That's her vision. But if you carry on running the Cambridge the way you have been, this is what you're going to have. This is what's your destiny, this, on your own. So stay up here and sort of enjoy your surroundings. I'll come and get you when I'm ready. All right. He's so wrong, he has no clue. And I'm, I'm thinking, when he comes back up, he's going to ask me what did I learn, and I'm going to say to him, I really didn't learn anything. Locked. Damn it. I've locked John, the hotel's interfering owner, on the top floor. I need to demonstrate to him how well the hotel can run without him. I'm not happy sitting there waiting because I know my guests are downstairs having a party, and I kind of felt that I needed to be downstairs. Gordon wants me to sit up here and, and, you know, and think that he's all right about all this stuff, and damn it, he's wrong about me being a control freak. With Ladies' Night in full swing, Chef's fiance and John and Tina's daughter, Shay, arrives to join in the fun. Hey. Hi, Mama. I think she's my last chance of getting through to John. Hi, Shay. Hey, how are you? You've got one minute? 30 seconds, please. Excuse me. Right. Thank you. Time's running out for your dad, for your mother, yeah. and for their house. I can't get through to your father. I asked him to go upstairs and just sit and ponder and, and think that this is your future. And if you think he's ready to change, by all means, bring him down. And if he's not, I don't care. Keep him out of there and keep him up there. Hey, Pops. Hey, Shay. What's going on? I'm just up here uh, sitting down and waiting. Waiting. To go back downstairs? I think the point um, was to try and visualize what could potentially be the future. Oh, uh, no, I've been doing a lot of thinking, too. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I thought my role was about the same all along. I feel like it's changed a lot. And I think a lot of it is a fear of trusting you don't have to be here all the time. When was the last time you sat down at home and had a dinner with mom? You know? Yeah, I feel guilty when I'm not here. Do you know what's going on downstairs? No. It's awesome. There is a restaurant full of people that are thoroughly enjoying themselves. It's hopping. And it's working without you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, I mean, I'm, um, it's gonna be tough for me to back off of the working. I think it's important for you. I think it's important for you and mom. Yeah, you're making good points, Shay. I think you would be able to spend more time with your granddaughter. Oh, I'd love that. It's possible. You don't want this to be your future. No. You don't wanna live here. No, I don't. You have to commit to change. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. If mom will uh, put up with me being home more. <laughs> love you. I love you too, Shay. Oh. I've, I, it's an epiphany. I've, I've just now realized my control is what dra is dragging the hotel down. 
now I need to make a change um, in order for my personal life to improve and for my business to get better. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Tonight has been a real success. Seeing Brittany in charge and Rich cooking fresh food gives me real hope. But is John capable of letting go? My goodness, it feels weird. It's sounding so quiet now, right? Uh, well done. Behind the bar, well done in the kitchen. Scooter, well done. Ladies, great. I mean, you couldn't get a, a seat at the bar within 20 minutes. That's how it should be. How much do we take? It's under $1,400 in two hours. $1,400. In two hours, we made more than the last four Wednesdays or four Thursdays combined. John, you spent the majority of the night upstairs. How was your night? It was in a very good night, actually. In what way? Um, my daughter, Shay, um, opened my eyes to some things. I'm here every night because I feel that I need to be here. That that is my role as the owner, to wave the flag as a military term. But when, I, when it came from Shay, as she said, you know, Dad, <clears throat> I know how hard you work, and, and I promised I wasn't gonna tear up. And uh, this all happened without me. You trust your subordinates. As a commander, the most important person you have are your NCOs. And Chef and Brittany are my NCOs. I can't tell you how good it is to hear that, because you're a fucking tough nut to crack. Because <laughs> we have got one hell of a day tomorrow. But I need everybody, everybody at their best. Uh, good job. Thank well you. done. Thank good you. night. Great job. Good night. What a day. I'm hoping that John has finally got that message, but is it all lawyer crap? Tomorrow we'll definitely find out. Oh, God. It's freezing. Coming up, I dragged the Cambridge Hotel into the 21st oh. century, and one of the hotel staff get some shocking news. My design team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Cambridge Hotel to the staff. Good morning. Good morning. John, how are you feeling? I can't wait to see what you've done in there. Right, you ready to go in? Yes! The only way we're getting in is with this, a key. Let's go. Let's go. The door is locked so your guests can sleep safe and sound. Come in. Unlocks, good, good. Right, come upstairs. I'm hoping you're gonna love my room. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, look at the floor. Wow. Oh. Taking the carpet out and putting that flooring in absolutely transformed it. The wallpaper was expensive. In order to enhance it, we work with it. So. We've got the back drapes above yes. the bed. Yes. We have this amazing new floor. Yes. Perfect furniture that fits the room. We've upgraded every room with brand new linen and towels. $75,000 worth of linen. Oh my God. My God. We could have never afforded that. That is so wonderful. I feel like kind of like a kid that comes down Christmas morning and there's so many things under the tree that yeah. you're, you're in overload. I can't really comprehend everything yet. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at it saying, wow. Ready for one more room? Oh, oh my God, I don't know if I could take it. Wow. <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I can't wait to actually show a guest upstairs to a room. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. Come with me, please. In the 1890s, the Cambridge Hotel gave birth to world famous Pyla Mode. And I think that dish can put the hotel back on the map today. Something I thought was a huge missed opportunity. I've been working on a, an amazing, very special apple pie recipe that I'm going to give to you that you own. And it becomes the best apple pie in America. And on the back of that, we've transformed this room through here to the Alamode room. Come through. Oh, my God. Morning, everybody. How are we? Oh <laughs> <laughs> we can sell our own pie that's homemade that Gordon is giving us his recipe for. Oh my God. This hotel invented pie a la mode. Mm. And the ice cream is made fresh here with a brand new ice cream maker and it's <laughs> locally <laughs> sourced cream. I can't wait to try it. I know. <laughs> Come with me, please. Enjoy the apple pie. Nice to see you. 
Please, come through. Beautiful pile of mode. Dig in, dig in. Come on, guys. If anybody wants this, you better get on it. Oh, my God, that's awesome. The world-famous Cambridge Hotel apple pie a la mode. That is the best crust I have ever had on a pie. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. We now have the best apple pie a la mode in, I'd say, the world. People are going to be excited. Mm. Scoot, what do you think, bud? I'm shocked. You're shocked? Are you happy? I don't know what to say. Oh, mate, don't get upset, buddy. What's the matter? I'm so happy. Oh, good. I'm happy, too, as well. You know that. OK? <laughs> Thank Come on, you. buddy. Seeing how much he changed the hotel was very overwhelming. Uh, I can feel a change. I'm a lot more inspired. Right now, I feel like I can accomplish anything in the kitchen. I am proud now. There's a new pride in me to say, this is where I work. Time to go. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually quite sad to leave this place because no longer is John in denial. He can now stand back and watch his team run the Cambridge properly. As I'm getting ready to leave, guests are starting to arrive at the new hotel. Hello. Welcome, Hi. guys. How are you? And the biggest change of all is not the new decor, it's the fact the guests are loving it at the Cambridge. <laughs> this is beautiful. The restaurant is buzzing. The Cambridge burger with the pork belly. Okay. Guests are enjoying the new home-cooked menu that are put together with Chef Rich. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And you better save room for the pie, because it's okay. totally different. Who's trying the apple pie? And the hotel's signature dish, pie la mode, is a big hit. <laughs> that ice cream is worth driving for. <laughs> Fantastic. Great buzz in there. I mean, it's electric, and <laughs> it's the sound of the new Cambridge Hotel. My only hope now is that they keep it up and Keep those customers excited, because when it's like that, it's phenomenal. Is that good? Can I have a bite? I think tonight went incredibly well. The, the fact that I could stay and, and sit with Shay and Addison and Funk, it was really, really nice. Wow. <laughs> to see you smiling is incredible. You know that. Yeah. You light this place up. But I don't want you living here. No, I'm not. I don't want to live here. I do not want you living here. I won't live here. OK. Tell him that. I'm not living here. I hear you. Give him a hug. He deserves one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he hasn't interfered tonight. And you sat down and spent time with your granddaughter. I had a blast. Yeah. My job is done, let me tell you. <laughs> no longer RIP okay. of the Cambridge. It has a bright future. It's long live the Cambridge. Long right? Live. That's absolutely right. Good night, my darling. Before Gordon came, no. I didn't know where to go anymore with the hotel. And getting Gordon here and having him show us what the problem was, now I can see that the things can be fixed. I will tell you, okay. Colin Powell says, optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> Stay optimistic, but don't get too involved, OK? OK. Uh, look after yourselves. Okay. Will, thank you very much, sir. Stay together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Before I leave this place, there's one more person I want to talk to. Bono, big man. So you've got three more years left at college, right? About four. OK, hear me out, OK? I want you to keep in touch with me. OK. I'm going to give you my email address, because okay. I want to finance those next four years in college personally and help you, OK? Do it for you. And keep that dream alive one day of owning your bakery. And then when your bakery's open, all I want back is a loaf of bread. OK? It's pretty unbelievable that he He's going to be able to finance my four years of school. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much. Well done. Can't wait to finish school and pay him off for that big loaf of bread. You have an amazing pair of hands and a lovely smile. Don't stop, OK? Got it. And God help you if you fail that college. Thank you. You won't, though. I know you won't. Well done. Thank you so okay? much. When I go to school, I'm going to push myself 200 times harder. I'm going to show Gorin what I can do and how fast I can do it. Good night. Thank you. Well Thank done. You Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, good job, uh -huh. man. Awesome job. Hey, you deserve it. <laughs> Definitely. What a week. What a place. And now, whenever I see Ella Mode, I know where it started. Tonight, I check into a New Mexico hotel where the guests are driven away by the owner 
who thinks you share. I'm like an audio mirage. If I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way. I've got to find a way to save a sinking hotel with dreadful entertainment. I would pay you a hundred bucks not to sink. Awful food. It's like the cat shell over my plate. And a general manager who can't be trusted. Does the general manager bad mouth the owner behind her back? Yes. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. The 14-bedroom Maison de Messia is a small boutique hotel located in the border town of Las Cruces, New Mexico. It should be a wonderful southwestern oasis, but the few guests that visit the hotel are in for an unpleasant surprise. Owner, Kali Shavinsky, purchased the former bed and breakfast in 2006 and completely remodeled it, putting her own distinctive taste and style into every aspect, from the food to the furnishings. To me, it's very European. It's very Tuscan in nature. Maybe that's the Venetian plaster, but I didn't really pick a style as much as I just picked out things that I liked. And one thing Kelly likes a lot is beige. The bedrooms are beige, with beige, and a little beige. The walls are freaky. It looks okay, like it's that's... trying to be marble, but it's plastic. I do not believe the customer is always right. Definitely not a place that I would feel comfortable staying. Sometimes they're wrong. Well. I don't care that cook well. Mm -hmm. She's pregnant, she wanted to make sure it was a well. You know, the more you cook it, the less flavor it'll have. How's that chicken parm tender salad going? Callie made the menu. We only serve Tuscan food. I don't even know if Callie's ever been to Italy. 86 bruschetta. Told you guys forever that was an awful recipe. But it may not be the bad food or the decor that's keeping guests away. My mother was a bartender, and she would have me sing to people, and they paid attention to me, and they liked me. I live for applause. Kelly tried to make it as a professional singer, but when her career stalled, she found her own personal concert venue. I bought the hotel to sing. The audience members really like me a lot. I'm like an, an audio mirage. You, if, if I do a share tune, you're going to think you're hearing share. If you're not looking at me, you think I am share. We get a lot of telephone calls. It's Callie singing tonight. Well, then that kind of means they like me. Too proud to tell you I was wrong. I think I surprise them quite a bit because they just don't expect it. Give me just a second here. After that song, I need a little drink. Two months ago, Kelly hired local restaurateur Zan Steinberg as her new general manager. Ladies, how are we? Who's, check who's checking in? Zan's wife, Mitzi has been working with Kelly since the hotel opened. In the beginning, my husband Zan and Kelly's relationship was very good. Has it deteriorated? Oh, punch. Where are the keys? How can I get anything done if that bastard won't put shit back? Zan is the biggest problem here right now, and that's unfortunate because I brought him on to help me with what I thought the biggest problem was, was we don't have enough customers. Some kind of general manager he is. Kelly should be fired for being a poor operator and digging this thing into a hole. With ownership and management not on the same page, the guests are the ones that suffer. How is everything here? We're basically ready to get our food to go because we waited so long. OK, yeah. let me take care of this. Callie believes that the customers have a place in her hotel, but Callie's at the tippy top of that pyramid. I do not enjoy going up to tables and having something wrong at every fucking table I go to. I don't like it at all. Hotel bookings have fallen to an all-time low, and for much of the year, not one of the 14 bedrooms has a guest in. If things don't change fast, the hotel will be forced to close. Someone needs to be able to tell me what it is I'm doing wrong. Everything that I have is tied up into the hotel. I need Gordon's help badly. My first time in New Mexico, I'm in Las Cruces in the Southwest Desert. And look at it. I mean, absolutely stunning. On the way to the Maison de Messia. Now, this is a small boutique hotel, possibly the perfect getaway. You have 
have arrived at your destination. You're kidding me. I mean, this is a joke. You've arrived. I'm not, yeah, I've got a fucking pile of sand. Turn around when possible. This is crazy. It doesn't make sense. You have arrived at your destination. Is that it there? Turn around Turn when around. possible. You'd think they have a decent sign on there, wouldn't you? It's like a prison. Finally. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Maison de Messia. Good to see you. So whose favorite color is beige? Well, Callie was the decorator. Callie is the... Callie is the owner. The owner, right. This is our cleaning agreement. If you could read and sign it, please. Cleaning agreement? Yes. Just so uh, you don't... I'm not coming for a job or a detox or... Just so you don't or... damage our property. This is a... Damage your property? Yes. The owner no, is very concerned Scotland. about the Venetian plaster. The owner is very concerned about the... Venetian plaster. And she wants me to sign a waiver. Yes, sir. To say that I won't damage it. Yes, sir. Does everyone have to sign these? Everyone, yes. Why would I sign a waiver? I'm not sure why you'd want to sign a waiver. No, sir. I'm not going to sign that. By the way, welcome. Good to see you. What a first impression. I don't believe that there needs to be a waiver. I just do what I'm told. You put all these things on there. It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. Maybe Italian? Uh, well, I have two Russians in Italy, and my Russians haven't got pictures of New Mexico. Bloody hell. Let's go up to the room. Do I have to sign a waiver to walk on the carpet? No, sir. Look, that was not me. Looks like someone's pooped on my wall. No, oh, you got a little fireplace. A fireplace. That's exactly what you need in the middle of a fucking desert. Do you have any alternate rooms? I'd love to move if it was less beige. All the rooms are going to be the same. Oh, shit. Well, thank you. I'm going to pack. You're going to leave me alone on my own in my room. Do I need to sign a waiver? No, sir. No. Nice to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you too, Gordon. Thank you. This room is so bland, it looks more like an airport hotel than a fun weekend getaway in the heart of New Mexico. I can't wait to meet the woman behind this. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the sun. Gordon. And Callie. This, Callie, good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, I thought that you'd be wearing beige with a lady that's in love with beige everywhere. I do like beige. My favorite color is beige, but I think beige goes with a lot of things. I didn't sign the waiver. Sending that message out to every customer coming in here is not a good sign to begin with. Well, it's $7.50 a square foot to replace the Venetian plaster, so it right. can be a lot if someone does some damage. Why don't you uh, show me around? I would love to show yeah. you around. This is the main dining room. How many seats have you got here? 89. Um, what do you have, a stairs? It's a stage where I perform. Oh, wow, amazing. And percussionist, guitarist? No, I, actually, right now I sing to tracks. So you have, like, a backing track? And I you do. sing over yes. there? Yes, I do. OK. Wow, wow, wow. And this is the bar. This is the bar. Over there, we have another yeah. stage. And I usually sing in here on Fridays and Saturdays. OK. And who else performs here? No one else. No. Wow, wow, wow. And then through here? Seriously? What's all that shit in the pool? Well, that's from the pool cleaner who was supposed to be here this morning. It's a little bit late. Is it busy, the pool? No, it's not. Very seldom do people use oh, really? the pool. Mind you, I suppose it's like going for a swim in a prison. Jesus Christ. What's on the back there? That was for entertainment. Oh my God, three stages. I sing everywhere in the hotel. I love to sing, period. Three stages? I hope there's no stage in the kitchen. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, this Sierra. Sierra Angel. Sarah, nice to see you. you. Likewise, where are you from? I'm from New Mexico. Oh, I'm nice. Yeah, Local girl. Mm, I am. Excellent. Is the cuisine uh, New Mexican? No. Some very... There's nothing here that's New Mexican at all, no. This is all very... Uh, I'm looking forward to tasting the food later. Anyway, whatever it is. Uh, let's catch up with the bar, shall we? Nice okay. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I like to cook Southwestern cuisine. Like, I don't know why we have Tuscan food. As the owner, in your mind, what's wrong with the place? Well, we don't have enough customers. And you've had it now since... 2006. Then. How much did it cost? $1.2 million. Wow. And that's what I purchased it for. How much did you spend converting it? Another 1.2. Mm. Two and a half million. Mm -hmm. Bloody hell. I shut down for 14 months to remodel it. 14 months shutdown. That's yeah, incredible. it wasn't supposed to be 14 months. It was supposed to be four. It turned it into 14 months and a million two to do it. And the contractor was indicted. Bloody hell. I've gone through a lot of stuff with this hotel. It's like, I'm starting to think maybe the problem is I'm just too trusting. How long can you continue putting money in? <sighs> I've got maybe 60, 70, $70,000 left. So for the next six months, max. Yeah, unless, unless, we, unless it kicks up. Um, listen, I'm, uh, I'm here to help. And I'm sorry it's been this difficult. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. I'm, I'm really glad you're here.
I've just arrived at Maison de Mesilla, and I'm confused by this hotel. Who put all these things on there? It doesn't look like New Mexico to me. It sure doesn't. I met Callie, the owner, and she told me she's desperate for this place to succeed. I'm really glad you're here. So, I'm keen to meet the general manager and see why he's letting this place fail on his watch. Now you're the general manager. I'm the general manager. Um, how long have you been working in hotels? Hotels would be nine weeks. Listen, I'd never been in a hotel, but I'd always been in restaurants, full-service restaurants. Stop. How does a restaurant manager become qualified to be a general manager of a hotel when you've never worked in a hotel before? It's not that complicated. Take care of the guests, check It's not that in. complicated. I don't believe it is. I can do the work. It's not that hard. There's only like six, seven things I need to learn. What are the major problems? The major problem is Callie is the owner. She's the major problem. Major problem. She is too controlling, and my hands are being tied. If you're not being allowed to do the job you came in to do, why are you here? I'm here because I'm emotionally invested in the place. How can you be emotionally my... invested when you've only been here nine, nine weeks? weeks? Well, my wife's been here all these years. Anytime somebody calls in sick, the first person they call is Mitzi. We've always thought it's a gold mine. We just can't figure out why we can't get people in the seats. The only way for Masson to be successful is for Callie to back out. What are these things here? Uh, the vinyl, we're, uh... Disgusting. In fact, can we take this off? Do you mind? Instantly, that looks better, right? You do not need to be a general manager to make that decision, do you? No. Is there a server, or...? I'm uh, gonna bring a server over for you. Please. Right and his or her name? Uh, Mitzi. Mitzi. Oh, it's your wife? Yes. How are you? Good, how are you? Let's order first, shall we? Okay. And then we'll have a chat. All right. Well, what would you like? We are in New Mexico, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, we are in Las Vegas. And I Taste of Tuscany. Yes. Why wouldn't you just go for a modern, stunning, delicious Mexican cuisine? I guess it's because she thinks there's enough of them. It's crazy. Uh, the prosciutto looks good. OK. The chicken piccata, that sounds interesting. OK. The lamb lollipops. Wow, well, it's not cheap, is it? $23 mm -hmm. for the lamb lollipops. Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Bloody hell. I got the prosciutto. I know good food. Thank you so much. No problem. Our food is really good. To be forewarned. It's hard to catch that all over my plate. Prosciutto normally goes with uh, tomatoes. Yes, Looks and like this big. is olives and anchovies. Popular dish? Um, no. It's like vomit, that I guess. Right? Whew, dear, oh dear. Word got out that I'm in town, and the restaurant is starting to fill up with customers. Can I try this one, please? I feel sorry for all of them. Wow. Here we go, my $23 lollipops. Been the longest member of staff here. What do you think is wrong with this place? Um, I think Callie's reputation. Is it that bad? She's rude. She's rude? Mm hmm She's brass. She's short. She's not flexible. I think you get the picture. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. Uh -huh. Blimey. Not what I'd call a loyal workforce. Or flat. $23. Dreadful. Tough as fuck. Do you like lamb? I love lamb. It's tough as anything. It's a little tough and perhaps a little rare. A little tough. What is going on? No, you haven't got much hotel experience, but isn't this your forte, restaurants? Yes. Bloody hell. I'm finished with that. Thank you. I mean, dreadful. Absolutely. Can you tell it? Is that lamb frozen? The lamb comes frozen, and we thaw, of course. Can you find out uh, where it's from? Yes. Psst. Lamb lollipops. No go. So far, nothing I've tasted has even a remote connection to the area. Nothing local, nothing authentic, nothing New Mexican. New Zealand. New Zealand lamb. Mm -hmm. Wow. That part's right. That part's right. Okay. Our chicken is, um, piccata is non-traditional. Thank you for visiting us here at Masande Masia. My name is Callie. I'm going to do just a little music for you this afternoon. A little rock number from Cher. Love her. And it's not in the kitchen. Uh, yes, yeah, a little bit much. Uh, I'm not too sure what's more scary, the food or the singing. What would you say? I don't know, they complement each other. Come on, ladies. Attacked by a fake bunch of graves. <laughs>
thanks for joining us here. Is that Norman? Mm. Yes. That's not just because I'm here. No. She is not Cher. I am sorry. I, I love this thing. That's probably why I bought this place. I've got to get away from this horrendous singing. We haven't met yet, have we? Say again, sir? We haven't met yet, have we? No, sir, I'm David. David, what'd you do? Yes, sir, I'm a pantry. Pantry? Yes, sir. Talents. Are you trained, David? Well, it's trained a little bit, sir. I've been around, sir. And where's your love of food coming from? Where, where do you? Where My do father. You, your father. Dad's a chef? No, sir, my dad was a nurse, but he loved to eat. Wow. Walking in another calamari with the rim you like. I have the second calamari selling right now, ma'am. Heard. Just, just two seconds. Yes, it's, sir. it's already breaded oh, and yes, fried. Sir. I'm going to fry it right now, sir. That's already cooked? Yes, sir. So when was it cooked? Oh, actually, we get it in a box, sir. We get it from a fish company, sir. Completely frozen. Just touch that? Oh, yes, sir. It feels like rubber. I, I don't eat the fish here, sir. How come you know this and you're still doing it? My opinion doesn't matter in this restaurant. Because you know it's bad. Yes. And yet you just, against your will, do it. <laughs> Life. <laughs> wow. I hope tonight's guest can remain as positive as David has. If you can sign this here for me, it's just a cleaning agreement. A what? A cleaning agreement? Just in case you do throw red wine on our walls. Does that happen? It has happened, actually. Unfortunately, the guests checking in are getting the same terrible welcome that I did. If I could please have you read. Good evening, ladies. Welcome. Nice to see you both. Thank Hi. you. I'd like to apologize about the waiver. All right, well, you, you got to do it. Ooh. Oh, oh. No throwing red wine on the walls looks like sign but. a cleaning agreement? Yeah. So what does that mean? Like, do the checkoff list when you come in, and then do the checkoff list when you exit in the exactly. morning? Is there any other breakfast other than coffee in the morning? No, ma'am, there's no breakfast. Is there a room service or anything? No, ma'am. You're lucky you're not hearing the singing. I'm going to head to the bar for a quiet afternoon drink. Any more singing, and I feel like my head might explode. Okay, what is going on? Customers are having dinner, and all of a sudden she breaks into this music. Totally unexpected. Oh, totally. Yeah, she just sits there and absolutely wails away. Yeah, I'm, what the fuck? Seriously, I've seen enough for one day. Just, you're gonna have to lay that down somewhere. Where's she going now? She's just gonna sing. No, yes, not, not in, in here. here. Yes, sir. You're kidding me. I thought these guests in here were the lucky ones. <laughs> I did, too. The same numbers? Exact same. She's a nut the job. Exact same board, yes. My name is Callie, for those of you who don't know. I do a little entertaining here. Got any Cher fans in the audience? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, thank you. With dinner service and the terrible karaoke concert finally over, it's time to get the chef and the management together and find out what on earth is going on here. Let's get one thing absolute certain. It is not a taste of Tuscany. It's not funny. It's a clusterfuck. So are you, are you, are you proud of this? No, I so told why him it's wrong. Because I'm not allowed to change anything. Oh, my god. I feel like there is many pricing issues here. There are definitely changes that have to happen. You're amazing. It's just total horseshit. It's just total horseshit. You know, it's you just like. Are you lying? No, we work within the constraints and I'm allowed to work. Oh, me, constraints this should all my been ass. Talk. This should have been constraints all talk. Constraints my ass. Pretty much. You have done nothing since you came in here but talk about me behind my back, try to set me up to fail every fucking day. Why and do I want to make you look I better? don't know. Well, I know. wish the hell I did know, but I've got several people we can line up and we'll tell them exactly what you said and to I, them. I imagine we will, you know. Then I can hear the no... same thing about you, Bullshit. you know. I'll leave, and the only thing you'll say, the parting words, not to me, is I hope he hangs himself. Now, how horrible is that when I'm doing an event here? Well, I'll tell you how horrible it is. About as horrible as when somebody hires all new people and tells each and every one of them that she's a bitch to work for, you can't work with her, but hang in there because in six months, I'll be running this place and she'll be gone. I mean, literally, right out of the box. Right out of the box. So there you go. You so have that's what no... it all goes back to. Yeah, because that's when I found out what an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. I gotta worry about my back continuously with you. What? This major miracle man that was supposed to come in here and double and triple this business when there's been no change whatsoever. None. So was I allowed but to that, make any changes? Or like direct, dramatically you, well, you make any to, changes? You wanted to hire new people, which you did. Of course, you told each and every one of them that they shouldn't work for me. Oh, for God's sake. Is that true? There was the impression given that Callie would no longer be here whenever oh we were brought she over. She owns yes. the place. Why were you suggesting that she's not going to be here after Sierra starts? I don't recall that. <laughs> Poor shit. Wow. It just wasn't what? her. She all, it wasn't right. her. It was you, Annie. It you was Kristen. Really... It was you, everybody. Oh, my God. Does the general manager badmouth the owner behind her back? Yes. 
course she doesn't trust you if you're going to bad mouth behind your back. If you were the owner, what would you do? I would fire that person that bad mouth me. You're fired. I think I'm leaving. I, I, I was just fired. Now, Callie, I'm sorry. You've already failed. And you need a fall guy. OK, you got me. You run it. You step up to the plate. Good luck. I'm leaving, too. I'm out of here. I feel betrayed. And if the bitch thinks I'm going to stay, she's nuts. You know, I don't mind Callie yelling at me. It's fine. She finally got it off her fucking chest. But she doesn't trust anybody. You know, everybody's burned her in her history. I don't know. I didn't burn her. It felt good to fire him because it's been a cancer here at the hotel. And now the tumor's been cut out, and we're going to be in better shape. Zan's just been fired, and the level of animosity and the friction between those two is extraordinary. But the question is, what happens next? I had a rough night's sleep with that bloody share tune going round and round my head. I'm hoping I can wash that tune out of my brain with a quick swim. And that's not all I'd like to forget. My first day at Maison was crazy. Within hours of my arrival, the general manager was fired. What an untrustworthy, backstabbing son of a bitch you are. And I had to endure torture by Kalioki. I really didn't mean to hurt you. Today has got to be better than yesterday. Let's hope the poor guy came. The pool is still dirty. What the hell is that? What a joke. I mean, what a badly utilized space. I mean, you think of a hotel anywhere in New Mexico. God, one thing is an asset. This is pool. I mean, this space could be the best thing about this hotel, yet it's just abused. Dirty, not even a towel out here, so. Who the fuck would swim in there? That's disgusting. So, no morning swim for me, but at least I can enjoy a good breakfast to start the day. God, that's all they've got to offer. How depressing is that? This is crazy. I've got to find some breakfast. I'm starving, and cold coffee isn't going to do it. But I've heard there's an amazing farmer's market in town, so I'm going to quickly check it out. What a lovely little place. I've heard David from Maison's Kitchen runs a food truck here in his spare time. No deep fried calamari, I hope. I saw the line, I thought, uh -huh. wow. What are you serving? We got quesadillas, best in New Mexico. OK, brilliant. I have a little, little food truck with a buddy of mine, Chris, a little taste of New Mexico. This is one of our favorites right here, the cucumber lime. That's perfect. A little mint. But 100 degrees outside, that's perfect, right? Yes, it huh? great. My goodness. Man, that's delicious. So what's in the quesadilla? Yeah. Cheese, yeah. green chili, yeah. and acidero yeah. cheese. Oh, Here you are, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. That is delicious. Yeah. Now, David, that's better than anything I've eaten in the hotel. You know that. Is there? Uh, <laughs> delicious. Thank you, sir. Uh, the food truck is my creative outlet. It's a place for me to at least express my ideas without having any borders. Well done. I'll see you later. Thank uh, you, good sir. job. Thank uh, you delicious. Nice, Enjoy the food, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This town is stunning, full of charm and local color. It's such a shame the hotel reflects none of that. I've got to find a way to get Callie to embrace New Mexico and make the most of what her hotel has to offer. How are you feeling? Hope you're okay. I think it's important for you to understand the bigger picture. Okay. Yeah, kick in with me, please, thank you. Hopefully, what I have planned will open Callie's eyes. Kelly, this is some of your guests. I'd like you to share your experiences. Why don't we start off with you first, please? First impressions are, are important to me, and, and the, the very first thing I had to do was sign a, a cleaning waiver, and it, it just it makes the assumption that I'm not going to be clean. That assumption was it was just a tough first impression. Yes, a valid point. Waivers are for bungee jumps. At your peril. Uh, the whole thing for me wasn't to make you think that I didn't think that you were clean. It was. I had someone come in and throw red wine all over the Venetian plaster, and I thought that I should charge them for that. But you're punishing it wasn't... every other guest well, on the back I of the sins mean... of one guest, and it's not right. You know, you can't penalize future business on the back of one idiot. So, it appears that there's no thought into what the customer's going to experience. For instance, um, the first thing on a hot day, you want to go into the pool. Um, and we looked out to the pool, and, it, and, it, and it's right now it's the same way. It's got um, a lot of leaves and it's dirty, so maybe it's not open, but how can it not be open? 
Yes, a valid point. Madam, please. We were in the lounge for dinner, and when you were singing, we couldn't have a conversation. It's just not appropriate for an upscale, intimate, fine dining experience. I feel like you're very focused on the performance, but you're not really focused on your guests. Very interesting. Sir? So Anything that goes wrong with the restaurant when you're singing, you're too busy singing and not caring about your guests. I would pay you a hundred bucks not to sing. As long as you are focused on your singing career and not on your restaurant and hotel career, my wife and I won't be back. I don't agree. I have quite a bit of people that come here to hear me sing. Guest feedback is critical. It's about turning that negativity into something positive. Now, I'd like to introduce you to a very special lady, Nilu Matamid. She is the features director and the senior correspondent for Travel and Leisure magazine. Nilu, um, give us a little insight to your stay, please. One of the things that we look at is whether a hotel has a sense of place, whether it's maximizing the value that that beautiful setting that it's in has. You mentioned the pool. That's one great example of a moment where you have a potential great asset here that is being underutilized, and it's kind of underwhelming. There's a reason why hotel schools exist. So it's not a hobby, it's a business. There is one question I'd like to ask you all. Would you come back to stay in this hotel again? Please raise your hands. No one. Um, thank you to you all. Your feedback has been absolutely pivotal. I uh, appreciate it. I was sending a message that I didn't realize I was sending and didn't want to send. I want people to come here. I want them to feel welcomed. Are you starting to understand? I am. You are? I am. You're worrying about the wrong things. The biggest issue you have is understanding who's number one. The guests have to be number one, not Callie. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. If you can change that, this place has every chance of becoming a big success. Can you change? Will you help me? I, I will help you, but you've got to start listening. I can do it. I can. I hope so. Coming up. That's awesome! <laughs> the biggest transformation in the history of Hotel Hell. <laughs> and a shocking twist. Where's all my shit? It's been a tough week at Maison de Messia, but I believe Callie is finally committed to putting her guests first. I can do it. I can. So, overnight, my design team have pulled off an incredible transformation, which I can't wait to share with Callie and her staff. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes. Please turn around. Oh, wow. Oh, a stunning yeah. sign. Wow. 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 Now, when you drive by, it tells you... What we are. Maison de Messia Hotel and Restaurant. Gorgeous, right? Very. Beautiful. Now, everybody that goes by is not going to wonder, huh, wonder whose nice house that is. Are you ready to see inside? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> because this, you're going to absolutely love. Morning, everybody. Look how beautiful. How are we? Oh, way cool. Welcome to your new hotel breakfast buffet. Wow. Remember what breakfast used to be like? We had cold coffee. Now, you have a very traditional, stunning breakfast buffet. That will be served in crisp white linens not those horrible plastic cloths. And that's not all. I reached out and got an amazing, local, talented breakfast chef. Let me introduce you to him. Meet David, our breakfast chef. Wow, David. <laughs> Hi, David. Hey. Hey, David. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. I, I feel great right now. I'm loving the recipes, and I'm, I'm really excited to be in the kitchen right now. Kelly. Yes, sir. I think that's a much better way of using that stage than a karaoke evening. Uh. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome. To you, sweet. Thank you. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Wow. Get in there. It's very cool. Wow. 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 Really very, nice. very cool. So we've incorporated some of the local colors and brought them in to this boutique hotel. Kelly, how are you feeling? I'm hazed. Room 205 is, is an amazing, amazing room. It, it's a New Mexico. Feel. And I know it's not beige, but you don't mind, do you? No, no, not no. at all. I think it's gorgeous. It I do. Is. The walls are still beautiful, and yet we have all this color, and, and, and it goes so well with the area that we're in. I've added color, but there's something I've taken away. There are no more waivers for your guests to sign. Is that good with you, Kelly? Good. <laughs> it's awesome. The front desk no longer has waivers, and the new rooms are colorful. They fit 
with exactly where we are in this historic district, I am very proud to show people the new rooms. I've got one very small thing to show you. You ready? We yeah. are. This you're going to love. Oh, it's out here. That's what I call a pool. Yes, oh, it is. Oh, my God. Uh, remember, there was leaves and crap everywhere. Now, welcome to one of the hippest, one of the coolest pools anywhere in New Mexico. That is the oasis in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Gone is that hideous fence and replaced it with new turf and pool furniture to die for. Beautiful. It is. It is. People will just want to come and hang out here now, bam. Bam, this is awesome. The pool, absolutely beautiful. Never seen anything like it. If we don't have pool parties now, then something's wrong. This is your fantastic cabana area. Gone is the stage. If you want to sing, Kelly, do it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a margarita, Carlos? <laughs> I'll be serving a lot of drinks out here. Uh, I'm hoping the business is going to absolutely kick off with this wonderful pool. Now that you have a stunning outside area, let me introduce you to your new poolside menu. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Poolside. So you start off with a lovely, refreshing tomato gazpacho, beautifully marinated, seasoned lovely with extra virgin olive oil. Fish tacos as well. Oh, I'm going to eat all that one. Yes. <laughs> and delicious fruit kebabs. Oh, this is great. Wonderful fresh fruit, mango, orange, lime, coconut, and seasoned with those wonderful green local chilies. A taste of New Mexico, <laughs> not Tuscany, Kelly. It's outstanding. The tomato gazpacho is, is, is magnificent. I'm very proud to cook this food. It makes sense. And it goes with New Mexico. I think it's excellent. Have a good look at the menu. Get used to it, because we're going to be pushing it big time. <sighs> See you in a minute. This makeover is the biggest I've done in any of the hotels I've visited. There's over $150,000 worth of upgrades, and I've never been happier with the improvements. It's exactly what the guests need. If I was Kelly, I'd be over the moon. Green chilies, pecans, everything that New Mexico is about, we have it on the menu. We have the guacamole, we have the salsa. What do I do with the five cases of hamburger buns that I just brought in? And, and even more, hey, what, we want to spend an hour putting things away every night and then bring them out every morning. This is what Ramsey gave the hotel on. Labor, 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 labor. <laughs> Who do I hire to do that? This is a lot of work. I can't, I can't, I, I love can't Yukon. deal with it. <laughs> I gotta go. Oh my God. There's things that I'm concerned about. The pool's outstanding. It's scary to me because I've got a pretty big job ahead of me now. And the linens, major pain in the ass. So many things that I'm gonna have to do that right now, I, you know, I'm really like freaking out over these. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do is raise prices. Callie is a little overwhelmed right now. I do believe she likes the fact that it's more New Mexican. Jesus, God Almighty. But Callie's Callie. Where's all my shit? Where's all my shit? What does that mean? The, all the other stuff that you took away. Uh, what stuff? Tell me. The, the, oh, oh, the tapestries. Oh, uh, I know you took down all the grapes. Yes. Which it was covering a pretty big hole in that wall. Uh, let's show me. Show me what we, what oh, we, whinging, kind of what we whinging about. Oh, is no, that what you're worried about? Is a plastic no. bunch of grapes? To hide this okay. where somebody hit it with a table? We can get your grapes back and you can stick plastic grapes back on the wall. Let me show you something for two seconds. I want to show you something really important. Just have a look at that out there. How beautiful know, is that? It's gorgeous. It's exactly yeah. what your guests need and want. Let me show you something. Oh, oh, there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there. And I look at this pile of shit in here. And you're starting to create a fuss. Forgetting that this hotel is about the guests, and you start putting the team on edge because you want plastic grapes, here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK, and I'll put it back in my van, and this shit here, I'll put back in there. Let me show you something. Oh, oh there it is. I look at that amazing stuff there, and I look at this pile of shit in here and you're starting to create a fuss. Here's what I'm going to do for you. In 15 minutes, I will clear all that furniture, OK, and I'll put it back in my van, and this shit here, I'll put back in there. I am, I am ex 
Uh, should we get for you, should, we, should we get in there and look for your grapes? No, okay. I am more grateful than you can okay. possibly. Well, then you have a very bizarre way of showing it. That's all. Thank you, Kelly. Sometimes what I say with the best intentions is taken with the worst. And to be aware of that is very good because that just means that I'm going to be able to start thinking the thought all the way through before it comes out of my mouth. I'm glad Kelly's grateful, but I am worried as soon as I leave, she'll be back to her old ways. Plastic grapes won't kill her business, but if she carries on singing, that might. You mustn't take this the wrong way, and I hope you don't, but I grew up with a dad that was constantly moving our family in and out of working men's clubs, bars, and singing every fucking weekend. Seeing him ruin his life, trying to be someone he was never going to be. The other night, I watched you move from here to here. I thought, Christ, you shouldn't be doing this in here. I think there's a level of class about you, the way you hold yourself, the way you dress, the way you, you appear. I don't want to see you being laughed at. I, <clears throat> I really don't know how to, to, uh, to react, but obviously, um... Every time you're singing, you're not, not running, running your own I totally agree with and you. Right now. It needs to be run. Okay, that makes sense to me. Good. Good. Thank you. I think Kelly's ready for a fresh start. So I invited lots of new guests and a local band for Maison's first ever pool party. Hi. Table four, four, five? No, 15. 15. 15. 15. How are we? Hi. Are you good? Yes. Having fun? Yes. Gorgeous place, right? Yes. Love it. Enjoy. The pool party crowd are loving all the changes. The fish tacos are yummy. Awesome. They're loving the food, guys, yes? Keep it going, yes? You know my first job when I was 18? Pot wash, starters, running. But I wasn't running to glamorous pools like you're about to run to. <laughs> and the new guests are loving the colourful rooms. Oh, oh, wow. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, that's coming. I think this will work. People will like this idea. It's no. really neat to have something like this in Las Cruces because there's nothing like this. So. We don't have to leave town. We're here. We're Vacation. Here. <laughs> I think Kelly's heart is in the right place, but she has a lot to learn about running her hotel. I'd like to introduce you to a very special man, Mr. Jeff Mayhem. Nice Hi. to meet you. Likewise. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm, I'm wonderful. Now, this man has a wealth of experience spanning nearly three decades of running some of the most prestigious and luxurious boutique hotels in New Mexico. Jeff's a former innkeeper of the year. He's not just good, he's one of the best. He knows this business inside out. After all, he does something so well that he's in Caper of the Year. I want my guest to get the experience that his guests get. I'm going to leave you two alone to spend some valuable time. OK, all great. Right. We look forward to working with it. Thank you. So let's talk. OK. Now, Kelly, clearly she can't turn back time, but she can insist on this place having a bright future. On one condition, she stays off that bloody microphone and makes her guests the stars and not a bloody singer. Can she do it? That's the million dollar question. Coming up, I finally put Callie's singing career on ice. Baby, if I could... It's the end of a long week at Maison de Messia. I'm really happy with the changes at the hotel, but it could still all fall apart if, instead of stepping up as general manager, Callie steps back onto the stage. It's time for me to say goodbye. If you have that little urge that you start getting the tremors and you feel a need for the mic, I want you to run into the freezer. Stay there two seconds. <laughs> I put your microphone in a block of ice. Now, this <laughs> will give you two or three hours to defrost, which will give you a chance yes. to understand that the guests are the stars. I understand okay? that. I want you to seize these changes and run this stunning boutique hotel. I will. Thank you. Thank you. I found out from Gordon that I don't have a singing career, and that's okay. I, this is my career. If I could turn back time, can't get that bloody song out of my mind. Since my visit, bookings at Maison de Messia have surged. Welcome to Maison de Messia. Two for dinner? Yes. The new guests are enjoying the pool and the new menus. It's delicious. We're impressed. I didn't even know this place was here. And Kelly is learning how to be a proper general manager. 
I appreciate you coming. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I really am very grateful. The man knows what he's doing. Thank God for Gordon Ramsay. I'm in Florida to help a struggling hotel on the beach. A young owner at the helm who has no control over his staff. What is that? Oh, boy. Why it's like that, I have no idea. <coughs> I'm faced with many challenging situations. It stinks in here. This is filthy. Really bad. And I'm unsure if I can turn this place around. Your chef has shut down. I can't work like this. I want to go now. I want to get the fuck out of here. Midway between Orlando and Miami, on Florida's Atlantic coast, lies the small town of Fort Pierce, home to the beachfront inn and inlet. Owner Brian Paul opened it in 2012 after running his family's successful local fish market with his brother. My job before the inlet was the, the CEO, the head of my dad's fish market. My dad ran a business like a, uh, a real leader. He had so many friends, pillar of the community. Everybody loved him, and uh, I always knew as a child I wanted to have my own place. I think Brian has a lot of schooling under his belt. I'm not exactly sure that he has any hotel experience. Brian, as an owner, is physically here sometimes. He's just, like, kind of wanders around. Brian is a little too easygoing. If it was me, I'd have my hands, nose, eyes, and ears in everything, and I don't see him doing that. Brian definitely has a lot of friends that work here, uh, some of which have taken advantage of him in the past. Um, I believe that Chef Ben probably has taken most advantage of him. I want a beer. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a tasty beer tonight, boys. Yeah. Ben is a, uh, an awesome guy. I've known him forever. We've been friends forever. I give him plenty of space. I help him whatever he needs, but I don't muddle in his affairs down there. I think that the issue here has been our lack of consistency with our food, and, and I mean, that directly has to be attributed to the executive chef. You know, his name is Ben. I feel like the inlet and the beachfront both lack direction. We're trying to be too many things at once. A nightclub, a bar, a restaurant, a hotel, a wedding venue, a concert venue, a place to do your Christmas party at. I mean, ah. The military secret. We have some guests and employees hooting and hollering until the wee hours of the morning. And that's out of control. That's got to stop. It's bad for business. Brian has to refund hotel guests money because of the noise complaints. I think this place has so much potential and so much to offer. We don't want to see it fail. We don't want to see Brian fail. He definitely needs to step up and help us all out to help him. He needs to grab those reins and start, start seeing the damage that's happening and uh, start fixing it. Today, I'm in the beautiful coastal town of Fort Pierce, Florida. Just looking around, you're surrounded by stunning beaches, marinas full of deep sea fishing boats. This place is gorgeous. Look at this place. It looks like the hotel's closed down. Hello. Anybody in? Welcome. Thank How you. How are you? I'm very well indeed, thank you. First name is? Liza. Good Liza. to meet you. Liza, good to see you. How are you doing today? Whose is this? The boss man caught it. And where's the other half gone? <laughs> Maybe they ate it. Belt, I don't know. Pair of shoes. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. It is a What do you weird. use it for? I don't use it for anything, actually. Wow. And what's that up there? That was here when I got here, believe it or not. That's for sale? Apparently so, yes. So he went onto the beach, picked uh -huh. up some driftwood, and then mm -hmm. dipped it in some varnish. Yep. Oof. <laughs> $22. Uh-huh. Stop. Same as that one over there. No. <laughs> Insane, no? <laughs> Have you sold any of these? No. Never? No. <laughs> Seriously. And how much for the T-shirts? Between $12 for employees and $18 for guests. So staff have to pay for their own T-shirts? Yes. And for the guests, they're $18? Yes. Wow. So when was the last time you sold a T-shirt? 
I sell them every day, but mostly to um, the employees. The employees? Yes. How long have you been here? The establishment's been here almost three years. I've been wow. here almost three years as well. What's wrong with it? From your um, point of view? Noise levels, you know, especially the one directly above the restaurant that... What kind of noise? Because it's not the... The music and the people, the foot traffic, everybody wow. hanging out at the bar and things wow. of that nature. So that restaurant. goes on directly underneath? Yes. Mm -hmm. They end up being refunded, and then they end up putting us on blast on all of these, you know, websites and social media and just bad reviews left and right. Housekeeping, come back. What's that for? Touch base with the housekeepers. Wow, have a good word. Um, just out of interest, uh, it's Gordon here, I've just checked in. How far away are the fucking rooms? I mean, you sound like you're miles away. Hello, madam? <laughs> you scared her. So, room 16. Yes, um, and where is it, please, darling? I'm going to direct you. Right this way. What's that thing there? We grill our wings on it. You grill your wings on it? Yes. How often do you grill wings in there? Every stinking day. Wow. Jesus. In fact, I think there's a wing left in there. <laughs> when was that grilled? Chances are it could have been yesterday. Those are the extra crispy ones. <laughs> and who's responsible for this? The kitchen handles all of this end of it, of course. You found another charbroiled. And these were done yesterday? I believe so. And they cook every day on here? Yes. And are the customers still alive? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> right, room 16. Let's yes, go. sir. This is your Caribbean building. The Caribbean. Caribbean, Caribbean, yes. Um, uh huh. What these part the... of this resembles the Caribbean? I think it's more so because of the view. Oh, the view. Right here, sir. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Whew. Look at this. Wow. It stinks in here. There's a very sort of damp, musty smell. Bloody hell. Oh, the bed feels like it's 15 years old. Oh, it smells. Curtains are terrible. Oof. The place is filthy. Really bad. Absolutely disgusting. $180 a night for this shit all. Oof. Wow. Mini bar. Consisting of absolutely fuck all. Freezer, over frozen and defrosted about 10 years ago. What a mess. I know when I'm coming to fix a business, they have various issues. But right now, with the information I have, I am not impressed with how Brian, as an owner, is operating this hotel. Hello. Hello, welcome to the inlet. So you must be Brian. I am, sir. The hotelier and the 34-year-old. I do it all. You do it all. Is that what you are, seriously, 34? Right. You know what? I'm 33. I work so hard, I think I just thought I was 34. You're 33. <laughs> hey. Um, did you call this building the Caribbean? Yes. Have you ever been to the Caribbean? Yeah. Which part? The uh, Bahamas. And this has been modeled on the Bahamas? Correct. Do you smoke when you're in the Bahamas? You know, like that. I've tried a couple times, surely. Okay. Stop. Yeah, yeah. That's... What hotel in the Caribbean or the Bahamas were you running before you bought this one? So I've just visited the Caribbean. I've never ran a hotel in the Caribbean. So you just go buy yourself a 25-bedroom hotel on the beach with a bar and... All I know how to do is run a fish market when I open this, and I built it from the scratch, from the ground up. So the fish is fresh, obviously from the market. They're so fresh. Right. I better jump in. Can I show you to your table? Uh, yes, why not? Yeah. <laughs> table for you right here. Excellent, thank you. May I? Uh, please. I'm excited for the fresh fish. It's so surreal, bro. Gordon Ramsay's in the dining room. What's with the name tags? I mean, you're the owner, right? I think I should lead by example, so I, I, I like to wear mine. That way, if I tell them that they need to wear them, then they can't say, well, Brian, you don't wear yours. Right. I'm starving. I'm going to get you some food I'm right starving. away. I'm going to get you a great server. OK, great. How are you? How you doing? Nice I'm to good. see you. My Likewise. name is Kelly. Kelly, how long have you been here? Um, I've been here about a year. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, why do the staff have to buy their T-shirts? Um, I don't. I was never told. Even our first shirts, our name tags. You buy your name tag as well. Yeah. We have to pay like eight dollars. Never and seen that before. <laughs> eight dollars a name tag. Twelve dollars a T-shirt. That's twenty dollars before we come to fucking work. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
As I look at the menu, I notice it's absolutely massive. So I decided to order the chicken wings, which honestly, I wasn't surprised when they were dry. Then I had the lobster mac and cheese, which technically isn't mac and cheese because they use penne pasta. But the worst part of my lunch was the tuna burger, which I knew wasn't quite right. Is that fresh? It is frozen. Oh, it's frozen? Yes. Hold on, you said it's fish market, fresh fish daily. Frozen fish, fresh fish, what's going on? We use frozen sometimes, sure. And you have a fish market that you buy from? Yeah, yep, yeah. Um, I'm confused. Ever since about four months ago, everything was fresh, everything. I ran up a little bit of a bill with my brother. So we cut back and started ordering some of the frozen stuff from some of the purveyors. And what's the feedback? We get some negative feedback. He hasn't had one nice thing to say. I know, it's a blow to the ego, but he knew it was going to be something. I think it was going to be everything. Um, explain this monstrosity. What in the fuck is going on here? This is our kiosk. Kiosk. An effort to have products for right. all sorts of people. So beach volleyballs, towels, volleyballs, uh, uh, bean bags, shirts, sick bags. How, how busy is this? How was it going? I honestly, uh, it doesn't do that good. How many beach towels have you sold? Not too many beach towels. All right. Show me one. All right. Be right back. I'd love to see one, please. What a fucking disaster. We're on the beach and we don't have towels. What is wrong with this picture? How was lunch? OK. OK is not good enough. Ah, I thought we lost you. Thank you very much. Whenever you're ready to go to the beach. Whenever I'm ready to go to the beach. Wow. How many do you have in stock? One. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Uh, That's the one. OK, can you charge that to my room, please? Yes, I so will. So we're sold out now? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. At lunch, I was very disappointed that Brian falsely advertises fresh fish on his menu. I want to learn more about how involved he is as an owner during an evening at the beachfront. Checking in, Susan Addison. Can I go ahead and start you off with something to drink? OK. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. OK, Ben. Hey, Chef. Uh, just give, give us a little quick run through how the uh, line works. Well, normally I run the pass and right. expo. Chef, I'll take care of this. Boom, boom, boom. Use the pass through the saute guy and then the fry guy. Working with Ben, I can't really tell you what he does. Where's Brian? Don't know, Chef. And Brian would just avoid him instead of trying to get to the root of the problem. And I think that in itself is a problem. How long have you been here? Uh, since last December. Oh, wow. So you've been here a long time? Yeah. In your mind, what do you think the major problems are? Lack of consistency, lack, yeah. as a matter of fact, and lack of structure. Yeah. yeah, I saw that lunchtime. Yeah. I found out about the fish not being so fresh. How so, can you not sell fresh fish when you're on the beach? That's our motto, fresh fish. So how many of them do you think understand that we're selling frozen fish? They probably don't. No. Because I don't think the servers are telling no. them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the customers disappear. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Great update. Thank you. thank you. Brian, how many of these customers in tonight know that you're serving frozen food? You know, they don't really know how the uh, the market works, so probably none of them. They don't know how the market works. They, they, they don't understand. Sorry. Uh, how are you? Good, hey, how are you? Do you think we're going to be serving frozen food tonight or fresh fish? Fresh, fresh. fresh. Why fresh? Well, we're on the beach. Well, why don't you explain to him tonight that you changed things four months ago and we're not serving fresh fish anymore, we're serving frozen. Man up. So uh, just a few months ago, we switched from some of our fresh products to some of frozen seafood products. Why would you do that? They're quality products. They just aren't the best of quality that you would expect from you know the Pelican yeah. seafood market. They're quality frozen products. Yeah, it's it's a cost thing. So when I come out to somewhere like this, being on the beach, of course, I would hope to have yeah. fresh fish. Where is this fucking freezer? It's around here. Uh, Where you keep the right down here, Gordon. Let's have a look. So this is the frozen bit here. What's that? Frozen avocado. Are we not in Florida? And you can't make fresh avocado? Dude, this is fucked. Where's the freezer? Excuse me. Main walk-in. 
Wow, wow, wow. When was the last time you were in here? I come in here once a week at least, and I once a kinda, week. you know, just kind of look around or whatever. What is this? Wow. Oh, man. Look at that. The water's gone slimy. And you come in here once a week? Yeah. What is that? Oh, boy. Fucking hell. What is that? Pina colada. Pina colada? Why it's like that, I have no idea. It's festered. It's, it's, it's off. It's bubbling. Oh, man. That's terrible. Fuck. Trash, please. <laughs> trash. <coughs> James, trash, please, now. Pina colada. Right down the drain. By the bucket load in the walk-in fridge. I mean, who in the hell operates like this? Gordon, this is Chef Ben's job. He's the executive chef. He's the executive chef. And you made him that executive chef, right? Sure I did. How'd you feel now? What's that? Tuna burger. That's from the burger? Yes, it is. Oh, my god. Seriously? Bacon. It's gone. It's, it's, it's off. Fresh produce on top of old produce. Moldy. And this one? Ribeye. Ribeye defrosting. Yeah. What is this? Those are the smoke grilled chicken wings before they go onto the char grill. Oh, my god. And what is in this one? You are kidding me. So underneath in that bucket is what? Cooked product. Cooked chicken. Mm -hmm. And on top of it is what? It's raw. Raw chicken on top of cooked chicken. I had them for lunch. I am at a fucking loss. Do you know the best way out of this? It's just to shut the place down. It's not an option for me. What's that in there, Ben? Those are marinated chicken wings. Yeah. To be smoked. Underneath, next box. Those are smoked. Rule number fucking one. Ben. I know. Chef, I didn't do it. You know, I turned my back for a minute, and this is the kind of shit that happens. I walked in, and it was bedlam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's telling me this is your fault. You've got no idea. I am at an absolute fucking loss. I can't work like this. This is huge. You now are running a restaurant cross-contaminated. Joey. Yes, Chef. Who's responsible for this? Um, we all are. The, the, the entire kitchen is, Chef. Rule number one. We can't put hot food in a fucking walk-in. It doesn't even go together. No, not at all. Nowhere near each other's. I guarantee you when it was put in there after I marinated it, they weren't shuffled. I can give you 12 more issues in there that are bad. I mean, you are heading for a fucking massive disaster. I, I mean, who the hell put them on top of the, the other ones? Everybody in here knows Brian, if better. I, if I Haven't knew, you trained I... everybody to know that? Yeah. I mean... All I'm getting right now is excuses. The kitchen needs direction from the chef, the staff need direction from the owner, and your buddies. Can someone come up with a fucking solution? I'm gonna go in 86 the wings. Sort it out quickly. Come on, guys. 86 wings! Someone put raw fucking chicken wings on top of cooking. It wasn't me, somebody else did it. 86 wings is the only thing I can do right now. What in the fuck is going on? I was baffled and amazed. The words out of Ben's mouth were, oh, I clean that cooler regularly every day. You want me to go in there and pull everything out, clean it? That is not your job to wipe the ass of an executive chef. I, I know that. There were weeks he wouldn't show up, but maybe three days a week. Why didn't Brian step up? Brian, he may be oblivious to some of this stuff. They've known each other since they were young guys, or, you know. This is crazy. Team. So Ben goes AWOL, Brian does nothing about it, the place starts falling apart. And then he just steps back in when he wants. Pretty much. Pretty much. But if this was your business, you wouldn't tolerate that. Man, I would have fired Ben a long time ago. I, I was all for firing Ben two months ago, so I mean. Uh... No excuse for that walk in like that, so. I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't hold back anymore. He doesn't go. He doesn't come to work. That's the reason why it looks like that, okay? That is absolutely the reason why. If he's here by 12 and he leaves by 5, we're lucky. I'm just, I'm not James is telling me the truth. I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you the truth. You're uh, not telling me the I truth. I promise you I'm going to tell you the truth. The only way to really, truly identify a chef before you even taste his food is to open up his walk-in. That 
speaks volumes for any chef. He's a chef that's given up and going through the motions. Sometimes I feel that way. We've been through a lot. I know he's got a lot on his plate. He's incompetent, and he's taking your fucking business down. You know, I, I don't think he's incompetent. You're fucking mad. And the sad thing is that your staff and your management and your team see it, and you're the only person that doesn't know what's going on. And this is the way you want to run your business. Yeah. Oh, you do not need my help. What's up, party people? <laughs> Wow, that's loud, that music. It is loud. Oh, man. What are you doing? Yeah, I just need a little piece of quiet. Oh, um, not you a good? Problem. That's crazy, no? Yes, it is. I mean, it's like the blind leading the blind in there because there's no discipline. That you know, I do know. Ben's checked out, Brian's never checked in, and uh, they're all blaming each other. Yeah, I do know there's no, there's no discipline, there's no communication, no. there's none of it. No. What's the problem with him stepping up and dealing with issues. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that he, he's not fully um, experienced in certain no. de departments. No. Are they hosting concerts? Are they... Uh, is it a frat party hangout? Is it a college? I mean, how can they call themselves a hotel? That's, that's the difference. That's the part that we need to try to separate, and I've been saying it for a while. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Good evening. Beach front end. Liza speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Liza. We're in room 20. Bad reaction. She had to take steroids, and it's supposed to be a non-smoking room. I'll be right with you. Ryan, the two guests have checked in upstairs. Okay. Uh, she's uh, she's got an issue with an allergy because the room stinks of smoke. It'd be nice to just come up and see them or try and calm the situation down. So the lady's got an allergy and she's already had to take a steroid, and her eyes are streaming and she's not very happy. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Any issues? Oh. Water all over the floor. <laughs> Sorry? We had water all over the floor. Water all over the floor? The what? refrigerator. There's water on the floor. In oh, the no, room. really? Yeah. I just cleaned it up with a okay. towel, yeah. You still I see something. I'm mine. sorry. Damn. I walked in, As it, was, a... it was completely all the way to the bed. Wow. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's come back. Let's go and see that lady. Right? Well, the ladies, her eyes are streaming. Do excuse us. Oh. Ladies, are you decent? Sorry, I've got the owner here. I think we figured out oh, really? what that smell is. There's yeah. all dust inside it. Oh, shit. There you go. It's just my eyes are tearing. When was that cleaned last? That's a, uh, that's really a daily thing that, um... Daily? It should be, sure, yeah, absolutely. That is not daily. Uh... Look at that. That's why. Ooh. Jesus Christ almighty. No one of the poor ladies broken out. It's like the back of my throat is all scratchy. Is there an alternative room we can use for the ladies? I'll double check right away. Have a drink downstairs, a little bite to eat, but we can sort something out. Okay. The big problem here is that there's no direction for the hotel, for the restaurant, for the gazebo, not even for the car park. Ben is like a headless chicken that's checked out, and Brian's like this scared school kid that is not qualified to run a fucking beach bar, let alone a hotel on a beach. So... <sighs> this is bad. This is really grim. Brian. Am I wrong? I feel like we blew it tonight. No, man, it's just it's, it's what it is, you know? We don't, uh, don't worry about it. Oh, for God's sake. After a very frustrating night, I woke up this morning hopeful that Brian would be eager to admit his faults at the beachfront. But that wasn't the case. 
even after a staff meeting, none of the problems are sinking in with Brian. So I reached out to his brother, Eric, who is continuing to fund the business, and I'm hoping Brian can start to see the damage he has done. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for coming in. Why is Ramsey here? Your brother just asked you a question. Why did you call me here? I've got uh, a lot of issues that uh, I need to take care of. You don't look like a man that's in pain. You don't look like a man that's struggling. You don't look like a man that's lost control. You look like you're bouncing around, having fun. The business is hurting. You're hurting your brother's business, and you're not realizing it. It does re reach a ceiling where, where Brian, you're going to have to get cut off. I will, I'll respect it, but you gotta let me know how much time and I'll, 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 I'll make it. I'll make it. Two more months, but then that's it. Two months. Here's my promise. I will focus so hard and I will be able to pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. I'll pay you in eight weeks. 30 grand. You gotta, you, 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 you gotta give me, you gotta give me 90 days. I mean, you gotta give me 90 days. He's just given you eight weeks. You've just asked for 12 weeks. Correct. You can't continue depending on your little brother's cash to float your dreams. I just need you to make sure not to screw this one up again. I'm not gonna screw it up. I'm not convinced. I'm not. No, no, no. You're lucky he's your fucking brother. Eric, I got you. Eight months. Eight weeks. Eight weeks are cut off. Oh, that's all there is to it, man. How important is your reputation to you? That's the most important thing in my world. And on a scale of one to ten, your reputation in this town now. I gave myself a good a good eight. A good eight. A good, good a strong eight. eight. Absolutely. So these are customers that have gone out their way to spend their hard-earned cash supporting your business. You must recognize a few of these faces. Absolutely, I do. Let's start off with the lady in the blue shirt. You know her very well. Hey, play. Hi, Brian. How do you know each other? Uh, I market Brian. You're a spokesperson for that business. Yes. Can you be honest with this one? Yes, I can. The service is very bad. I've brought people here. I've been up at the bar myself trying to order even just a water. That's been tough. Do you not listen to the advice in terms of sloppy service? I, I absolutely, I, I listen, I do listen, I do listen, I do listen. Do you offload that to your team? No, I don't, I don't. So that's why it's not dealt with. Sir, your experience? We ordered a chicken sandwich. When the chicken sandwich came out, it was raw. It was raw and it was mushy in the middle. I could have got sick from that. And I love your bar because I can come here late night and I can get free drinks. Two for me and two for my buddy and pay for one, we got five. Wow. Unbelievable. Sir? My first experience here was a Super Bowl party that you advertised and uh, actually had some out of town guests. Food was very mediocre. The crab cakes were like sawdust. They were horrible that night. After the game was over, a couple of rowdy fans started a little brawl. Uh, we had drinks thrown on us. Wow. The other thing I'd like to say is, if I'm staying on the ocean, I love to fall asleep with the window open and hear the ocean. You can't do that here. You hear music all night long. I honestly stayed here myself once. I tried to call down because um, our sheets were dirty. You couldn't even call, like nobody answered. And literally, I think the biggest problem for me is the mixed message. It's like, are you a bar or are you a restaurant? Because we're paying $150 for dinner. However, there's people walking in in bikinis, drunk. Damn. Listen, this feedback has been crucial. Anything you'd like to say? Thank you, guys. You guys rock, man. Yeah, man thanks. Thank you. I'm telling you, make you proud, I promise All right. you. All right, let's, <laughs> let's go. It's not a time for high-fiving. I'm fucking embarrassed. What the fuck are you hugging them sure. for? I know that they care. I do know they care. A raw chicken sandwich. But that's not an eight. That is not an eight out of 10. And do you think they're set up? Do you think this is a TV show and we're just going to spout off? These people aren't exaggerating. They're real. They're real customers. You're turning into a laughing stock. Yeah, no, it's not good. The jury's out with me. 
I've never come this far and still sat on the fence in an undecided way. But fucking listen up and listen carefully. The partying, the free-for-all, I'm paying for one drink, they're giving me five in front of your eyes. Tomorrow, you turn up here looking like an owner. Understood. You got a lot on your plate, but get your head out the fucking clouds and get real. Fuck off. I've got this, Gordon. I'll yeah. show you. Even though I wasn't won over by Brian's commitment, I went ahead and designed a new concept for the beachfront. My team and I completely overhauled the rooms and added a beach club to the unused outdoor space. I'm really hoping Brian can see the potential he has to offer. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I wish it was a good morning. What did I ask you to come into work today? What did I say? What was the one thing I said to you? Come in as a... Boss. A boss. Right now, you look like a towel boy. I mean, sunglasses around your neck, badge on there, shorts on there. Who are you? Give me the name badge. Stand out from the crowd. You're the owner. I've had a really rough night, and so has my team. Get out of here, get changed, and come back like an owner. Now, fuck off. Ready. <clears throat> Honestly. Gordon. Hurry up. No, 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 no. I'm not listening. Gordon, I'm coming back like a boss. I'm ready to make this whole Fort get... Pierce community prep. Gordon. Get out of here. Seatbelt on. No doors and no seatbelt. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be ready. Brian returned looking like an owner, and I'm hoping that translates into his role as a boss. Let's go. Jerry, quick step, let's wow. go. It's time to reveal to Brian and his staff the newly renovated beachfront inn and nice. inlet. Oh, my God. Oh. Wow. This is what I envisioned. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. First of all, this is not the Love spring it. break Love hangout it. that's gone wrong. This is a proper beachfront room. Sweet. <sighs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an inlet. Oh, oh, my God. Whoa, the floor. I love it. It's, it's perfect. But you've got a tangible asset here that can help lift this business and, more importantly, start making money. Awesome. Brian, you need to get a grip of this business and you need to realise, you know, what's at stake here. I need to be convinced. I need to see you stepping up as a boss. Ben and Jerry, we're relaunching that restaurant tonight. So. I'm going to go through with that menu, jump downstairs, get organized, and start finding your way. Let's go. Oh, oh man. After observing dinner service, I saw the beachfront kitchen wasn't set up to handle such a massive menu. So I redesigned a smaller menu that is easy for Ben to execute. OK, guys, small menu. Let's run from the top. Appetizers, lobster mac and cheese done with the correct pasta, Ben. Steamed lambs, again, great sharing for the table wings off the smoker, so it stays nice and crisp. And a chicken cob salad. Entrees, pan-seared scallops. Easy, three sears, ahi tuna, fresh. And then, of course, the mahi-mahi. It's small, it's inviting, and tonight, I've just been told that we've got the mayor in for dinner. There's one person we can reach out to to send the message back in the community. This is it. Dig in. Mm -hmm. That sauce is fabulous. Oh, my God. Wow. It's time to relaunch the beachfront. I've put a plan in place, and I'm really hoping Brian can finally show me that he's ready to run his business. All right, everybody, listen up. Tonight is a big service. There's not many opportunities like this. You have to take advantage of it. I need you guys all to get together right now and bring it in. One, two, three, go! go! Brian, Brian, let's just get real for a couple of seconds, yep. yeah? Yes, sir. You forgot the fucking most important thing tonight. Who is in for dinner tonight? You haven't even told the staff. Possibly the most important person in this town. We have the mayor in tonight, you guys. The mayor. And that's just not something that happens every fucking week. 
You have to bring it together tonight. You have to work as a team. Sort it out, guys. We're opening Next. in five minutes. Come on. Checking in. Yes. All right. Welcome to the inlet. Good evening, good evening. This is lovely. Um, enjoy dinner. An amazing array of appetizers, and the entrees are to die for. Tortoise in the hair, slow and steady wins the race. So first take it on, yes? Good. Hi, how are you? Welcome Hi, to the guys. Just the two of us tonight? It's the mayor, okay. Yeah, that's the mayor. Now, where are you sitting at? Come on, where? Well, they were gonna, they were gonna... Well, give her a choice. We'd like to sit inside or outside. It's her choice. Welcome. How are you? Thank you for coming in. So nice to Thank see you. Thank you, guys. Likewise. Um, it's an absolute you. pleasure. I'll leave you in hands of our manager, owner, Brian. Follow me, guys. Thank Welcome. You very much. Thank John, you. good to see you, sir. Likewise. Okay, guys. All right, Mayor, wherever you'd like inside. I got a chicken burger ready at your leisure. Chicken burger? Ben, as Brian told you, the mayor's in. No, no he no. has not. Unreal. Brian, your chef doesn't even know the mayor's in. Ah. You don't think he deserves to know? Come yes, on. he does. Come on, man. Ben? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The mayor's in at table seven. Heard table seven. Inside. Yeah. Am I good, Ben? I've got that black and chicken for you. And that's it. Ben, you need to be the captain. And right now, I'm not convinced. Let's get serious about this business and do this. Is the mayor's order in? Have they sent their appetizers yet? Yes, it is. Have they, have, yes. they, have they hit the table? No, I put their food in. He wanted the salad and the fried calamari, and she wanted the uh, mahi. Mahi, OK, great. So again, check it. That's your hot ticket tonight. But do you know what's happening in your kitchen at the moment? No, look at me. Do you know what's happening in there? Absolutely. You haven't got a fucking clue. Yeah, get into the kitchen, find out what's going on. Let's go. Behind you. Ow, that burnt my forehead. Oh, man. Excuse me. I'm starving. So what did you guys order? Um, I got the mahi-mahi and a salad, and he got an appetizer. The mayor is the only person sat with nothing in front of her. Please. All right, two tunas. Can I have table 15's appetizers ASAP? It's the mayor. 15? 15. I was told seven. Fucking hell. Sorry, miscommunication. They're sat on 15, right? I made a mistake, it's 15. Okay, I need two house salads right now before anything else. Right this second. Brian didn't know what table the mayor was at. It seems like the biggest thing Brian changed was his wardrobe. Two house are in the window. Two house need to go, 15. Have you seen the salads? No. Ben, yes, sir. you need to see that. You need to taste that and see everything he's doing there. Terry, that's too much dressing, bro. Redo it. Salads overdressed, soggy as shit, wrong dressing. Ben. Yes, sir. What I need to hear is a bit of a voice. If we go silent, we'll go down. For tonight's relaunch of the beachfront. Salah's overdressed, right. soggy as shit, wrong dressing. I was really hoping Brian would step up as an owner, given that I put everything in place for him to succeed. God damn it, dude. But his lack of focus has me really worried that he's not fit to run this place. Come on, Brian. Come, come on. Ben, bye. Oh, come here. Come here, let's go. Your chef has shut down. I didn't realize it. You didn't realize. So the first two salads for the mayor had the wrong dressing on and were overdressed. I said, if you taste them, he said no. So he hasn't got your back. When's that penny going to drop that you're going to turn the corner? Uh, we'll watch Ben. If he doesn't come out of it, we'll switch him and Joey. Will you? How many guacamoles you guys got out there? OK. okay. Hey, chicken 30 seconds. Give me time on the mayor's table, please, Ben. Table 15? Yeah, the mayor's table. We sold it. Calamari and uh, mahi. Did you see it before it went? I sure did. I played it everything. The mayor hasn't got a fucking food. Brian, Brian, urgently, come here. So Ben's told me the fucking mayor's got their food. Right. And look at the mayor's table. There's nothing on there. Now look at me. Look, look now. Hey, we're about to go down. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to get in my fucking car and I'm going to get to fuck out of here if you don't get a grip. Because this is a fucking joke. Now you better get in there and tell your executive chef, Ben, that the mayor hasn't got their food and find out where the fuck it is.
Ben, the mayor has not gotten her food. I'll put it in the window. Where, where is the I'll make it right food? now. I'll make it right now. Be nice to have some food right about there. Let's try the mayor's food again. Jerry, I need a Caesar now. It's coming right now, Gina. Order up. Where's that going? 51. 51. Come here, you. What is that? Undercooked. That is undercooked. Uh, young lady, come here. What does that chicken look like to you? It looks black. Thank you. So it's dry. Um, young lady, how would you describe that chicken? Uh, looks kind of dry. Very dry. Very dry. Uh, you're not even a chef, are you? Mm -hmm. No. No. Never no. How old are you? I'm 20. 20. Thanks, Dylan. Mm -hmm. So from a 20-year-old server who's never cooked, even she spotting it's dry. And you're saying it's raw. Let me tell you something. And listen carefully. I'm going. I'm packing my bags. Because that is the worst thing we've sent all week. It's overcooked and it's dry. And then you, you tell me it's raw. Good night. I'm done. That is unreal. I mean, I'm so pissed off. I can't give that guy any more advice. I can't continue to tell him to step up and make decisions. He has a chef in there that's just riding him and riding the business. And when you're weak, you've got no chance of running a business. And what a shame. Un fucking real. Hi, right, coming around. I never liked to leave a business, but Brian simply wasn't listening. He missed the deadline paying his brother back, and while it's been a slow process, my advice finally started to sink in. Four months after I left, he made a decision to let Chef Ben go and hired a brand new kitchen staff. On the hotel side, Brian has made the guests a priority, given the curfew to the nighttime entertainment. Hopefully now, with Brian stepping up like a boss, he can lead the beachfront in the right direction.